We are the Ultramarines, the sons of Giaman. Whilst we draw breath, we stand. Whilst we stand, we fight. Whilst we fight, we prevail. Nothing shall stay our wrath. From Marneus Kalgar, Chapter Master of the Ultramarines. The Ultramarines are considered one of the strongest and most honored of all the Space Marine chapters in the Imperium of Man, and were responsible for almost single-handedly holding the Imperium together after the Horus Heresy. Highly disciplined and courageous warriors, the Ultramarines have remained true to the teachings of Primarch Robutgiaman for 10,000 Terran years. They reshaped the Imperium after the Heresy in the time of rebirth on the orders of Giaman himself as the Lord Commander of the Imperium and Imperial Regent. Now, the name Ultramarines is a nod to the chapter's galactic region of origin, its standing amongst the other Space Marine chapters and their role as the source for the gene seed of more chapters of the Adeptus Astartes than any of the other former first founding legions combined. The culture of the Ultramarines is loosely themed upon the culture of Old Earth's ancient Roman Empire, as exemplified in their Astartes' high Gothic names and their strict adherence to the Codex Astartes, as well as the society of their homeworld of Macridge and the chapter's method of recruitment. The Ultramarines directly rule the sub-sector of space in the Segmentum Ultima of the Galactic East, known as Ultrama, as a thief of the Imperium, and their chapter master is also considered the Lord of Macridge and the Master of Ultrama. Of all the thousand and more Space Marine chapters in the Imperium, it is the blue-clad Ultramarines that, in the mind of the countless billions of the Emperor's subjects, personify everything that the Adeptus Astartes stands for. They and their many successor chapters have stood at the very forefront of the war against the traitor, the alien, and the demon since the very foundation of the Imperium. Across the domains of the Emperor, the Ultramarines are celebrated as heroic, virtuous, and noble defenders of humanity, their deeds recorded in devotional works the length and breadth of the galaxy. Even amongst the Space Marine chapters themselves, the Ultramarines occupy a position of special honor. The gene seed from which the original Ultramarines Legion was founded is considered the purest that remains, and it is estimated that some two-thirds of chapters across the galaxy share their inheritance, being either direct successors or created from tithed Ultramarines genetic material. This shared inheritance often ensures that when the Ultramarines go to war, they are supported by many other chapters, and that when Space Marine commanders gather to consider common strategy, the Council of the Ultramarines is greatly valued. In fact, they are so highly esteemed by their brothers that the presence of even a small number of them in a larger military undertaking will ensure the participation of many more chapters. When High Fleet Behemoth struck the Eastern Fringe, it was the Ultramarines chapter that turned the tide, even at the cost of the chapter's entire veteran first company. At the chapter homeworld of Macridge, one of the largest battles seen in centuries was fought, with them led by their master Marneus Kalgar at the very forefront. 
in addition to the great honor won by the chapter in that titanic struggle, the Ultramarines gained invaluable experience in fighting these vile Xenos, which they have passed on, often via service in the Death Watch, to many other chapters. When the Horus Heresy erupted, the Ultramarines were long prevented from defending the throne world by the Great Ruin Storm conjured by the word bearers during the Battle of Kalth that cut the galaxy in half for long years. By the time the Ruin Storm dissipated and the Marines could move to reinforce Terra, War Master Horus's Siege of Terra was already underway. Nevertheless, the Ultramarines fought their way towards it, and although they defeated a massive traitor space fleet, were, sadly, unable to reach the Sol system in time to intervene in the final battle. It is Giamun's actions subsequent to the Horus Heresy that made him the figure of adoration that he would become. With the traitors scatters and the Emperor to all intents and purposes lost to humanity, the Imperium stood at the precipice. It was the genius and leadership of Robut Giaman that saw the Imperium through its first standard century after the heresy, as he kept invaders at bay and saved the scattered human worlds from collapsing into anarchy reforming the Imperial bureaucracy and armed forces as needed. Robert Giaman fell at the hands of his erstwhile brother, the demon Primarch Fulgrim of the Emperor's Children Traitor Legion at the Battle of Tessala in 121 M31. Poisoned unto death, his barely living body was placed in a stasis field, and later enthroned in the Ultramarines' fortress monastery. There, it remained for 10,000 standard years, until he was resurrected by a combination of Imperial science and Eldari mysticism during the 13th Black Crusade in circa 999, M41. He would take up the mantle of the Lord Commander of the Imperium and the Imperial Regent once more, and now leads the defense of mankind from the darkness brought by the birth of the Great Rift at the dawn of the era Indomitus. The Ultramarines are by far the best known and most celebrated Adeptus Astartes chapter in the long and bloody history of the Imperium of Man. Statues of their Primarch and their greatest heroes rear high above countless plazas and city gates, and images of their myriad victories glow from stained glass windows in the mightiest basilicas imperialis. Their legion was the largest of those bodies raised to prosecute the Great Crusade so long ago, and as a result, it provided the largest number of chapters when the second founding occurred in the aftermath of the Horus Heresy. Every chapter has its own traditions, histories, and battle honors, but the Ultramarines are the standard by which many others especially those of their genetic lineage, judge themselves and their peers, whether they acknowledge it or not. It is through the dictates of the Codex Astartes that the 10,000 Tehran years of wisdom and expertise gleaned by the Ultramarines are enshrined. This vast reserve of law was authored by the Ultramarines' Primarch, Robert Giaman himself, wherein he laid the foundations of the Imperium's reformation during the time of rebirth and the aftermath of the calamitous wars of the Horus Heresy. He was a leader of prodigious intellect, 
and not just in the military field. With the Imperium brought to its knees by galactic civil war, he turned his mind to uniting and codifying the highest echelons of the Imperium's government, imposing order on institutions that had been split asunder by the anarchy of the heresy. Only a Primarch, a gene son of the Emperor himself, could have conceived such an undertaking, for the scattered Imperial worlds that had survived the heresy were on their knees, riven with plague and famine, and rife for rebellion or invasion. The task was gargantuan, and no mere mortal man could have faced it without going mad. He offered leadership and hope, and he became a figurehead for the reborn Imperium. Countless billions came to know his name, and while he could never replace their beloved Emperor, he was a firm hand when it was needed most, and the Imperium endured. In committing his wisdom to the first volumes of the Codex Astartes, Giermann must have known that he would not see his most cherished ambitions fulfilled. After all, None had ever imagined that a Primarch might know death, but the heresy had seen several slain or otherwise lost, and in the years that followed, more would suffer similar fates. When Giaman was lost to the Imperium, he left behind him countless works of wisdom and insight, and the greatest of these was the Codex. Though the Imperium would again rise to heights rivaling those of the Great Crusade and descend to depths of despair as dark as the heresy, Robert Giermann's wisdom would prevail. The Ultramarines were, and are, the guardians of that wisdom, and the exemplars of all their Primarch embodied. The Codex has become a sacred text for them, a blueprint describing the ideals by which the majority of chapters organize themselves, fight, recruit, train, and operate. The Ultramarines rule over a region of space called Ultrama, an autonomous realm that owes no ties to the Imperium and looks entirely to its own defense. The peoples of the various worlds of Ultrama look to the Ultramarines as both beneficent rulers and as distant figures of legend. While the vast majority of humanity will never even see a space marine, let alone speak to one, the people of Ultrama are more familiar with these mighty warriors. Some even have the honor of being distantly related to one perhaps some distant ancestor having been accepted into the chapter. The Ultramarines regard it as their sacred duty to rule their domains justly, and to protect them as the source of their recruiting and resources. This, they are continuing the legacy of their Primarch, whose teachings each warrior studies and memorizes over the course of his service. The Codex Astartes is such a vast body of wisdom that even the prodigious, genetically enhanced mental capacity of a space marine is taxed with absorbing it all. Yet the Ultramarines regard it as their duty to do so, and choose to eschew the blunt tool of psycho-conditioning in favor of learning every passage by remorseless study. Each battle brother absorbs and analyzes entire chapters of the Codex, so that after several standard centuries of service, he is at once a master and a scholar of his chosen area of expertise. Within a company, especially a low-numbered one consisting of numerous long-service veterans, it is likely that the entire Codex of Studies will be known by them 
allowing its commanding captain to draw upon an enormous pool of wisdom as well as experience. A veteran ultramarine's battle brother is therefore a deeply learned individual, schooled in every nuance of the arts of war and the wisdom of his primarch.